We worship this morning according to the order of morning praise on page 45 in the front of the hymnal. O Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. Praise be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us worship Him. congregation is invited to join in singing Psalm 96 on page 102 in the front of the hymnal. Psalm 96 on page 102. The congregation may be seated.
Our Old Testament lesson for this Harvest Mission Festival is from Isaiah chapter 12, beginning at verse 2. Surely God is my salvation, I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. So far the Old Testament lesson and our epistle lesson from 2 Timothy chapter 3 begins at verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it. And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the 21st chapter, according to St. John, and begins at verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, you love me. Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. This is the gospel of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Congregation will join in singing hymn 508.
grace, mercy, and peace are yours. From God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A portion of God's word which we will use for the sermon text today is a portion of the second lesson that Pastor Hefty read earlier. From 2 Timothy chapter 3, we'll hear again verses 14 and 15. There the Apostle Paul writes, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. This is God's word. Please be seated. In the name of our Savior Jesus, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth, dear Christian friends. Why do we have to learn this? In the 16 years that I've been teaching high school, that is probably, although I haven't kept track, it's probably the question that I've heard more than any other question. Why do we have to learn this? Now, most people are not talking about the Bible, thankfully. They're talking about things like geometry, or biology, or physics, or Western Civ. And patiently, it's difficult from time to time to describe to them how those learnings all build on each other and are good for their future. I'm glad that not too many students anymore know about a book that I remember that was written about a quarter century ago called this. All that I needed to know, I learned in kindergarten. Maybe some of you remember that book. Maybe you've even read a part of it. And really, the author wasn't making the point that once you're done with kindergarten, you know enough to make it through life. He was saying this. Some of the rules that apply in kindergarten would make the world a much happier place if people would continue to follow them. Rules like this. Don't hit people. Play nice. Clean up after yourself. Put things back where you found them. Share everything. And of course, my personal favorite, take a nap every day. <laughs> Maybe life would be greater if we could follow some of those rules. It's interesting, isn't it? That that's a secular book, but doesn't it reflect a scriptural principle? Isn't that the whole point of loving our neighbors as ourselves? I'm glad that I haven't heard from many students why do we have to learn this when it comes to memory work or the Bible because this morning the Apostle Paul tells us exactly why we want to be lifelong learners of God's holy word. Kindergarten isn't a stopping point, not for school and certainly not for our spiritual learning. The Apostle Paul encourages in the text a young pastor, a young pastor, Timothy, to be that lifelong learner. And if you look closely at these words that we're going to analyze today, really, the Apostle Paul gives us a three-phase approach to Christian education. As you celebrate your Mission Fest to Harvest Fest today, we talk about Christian education as such an important part of that. And the Apostle Paul would say to each one of you this morning, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing because this three-phase plan works. And here are the three parts that the Apostle Paul will tell us. Start early. Then continue to learn. Finally, live forever. Start early. The Apostle Paul tells Timothy that he, from infancy, had known the Holy Scriptures. Well, how had that come about? Timothy was a young man that the Apostle Paul had met on his missionary journey in Lystra. Well, he had a faithful grandmother named Lois and a faithful mother named Eunice who taught him those holy scriptures. The Apostle Paul earlier in 2 Timothy said this, I constantly remember in your prayers and I know your faith, I've been reminded of it, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded now lives in you also. From infancy, those two ladies took young Timothy to the scriptures, taught him the truths of God's word, gave him the foundation that he needed for his faith and for his life. 
Did you catch what that foundation was on? How from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures. They taught him God's Word. The unmovable, unshakable Word of God. You know the passage from Isaiah, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the Word of our God stands forever. That's how they prepared Timothy for life. Has anything changed? Isn't that the greatest preparation that we can give to our young people as well? A foundation on the Word of God? Sometimes we are guilty of overlooking the importance of that, aren't we? And yet other things in life have become important or continue to become important. We have to get to soccer practice or have to take them to dance class or make sure that they're in the front of the top of the class as far as piano goes or whatever it is. And those things are great too. And the Lord doesn't want you to not to do them. But how important to start our children young, even from kindergarten. I bet many of these sitting in front of me this morning can remember singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, when you maybe could barely even talk yet. What an awesome thing to already know your Savior at a very, very young age. That's why God gives children to us. As much as the physical blessings and everything else that God gives us are His, so are our children. They belong to God. He gives them to us for safekeeping. We want to take them to the truth of God's Word again and again. That's where your school, Sunday school, Christian education comes into play. It's a way that we can assist parents in raising their children in the training and instruction of the Lord. I bet everyone sitting here today can think back in their life to their Lois or Eunice or the Apostle Paul. That one person that you remember, a, a parent or grandparent, maybe a pastor or a teacher, who made sure that you knew the truths of God's Word. What an awesome thing to know that foundation of faith, that foundation for life. Solomon wrote this in the Proverbs, Train a child in the way he will go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Scripture is full of examples of why it's so important to start our children early for that foundation. But it's not enough just to start them early. The Apostle Paul says that's only phase one of the plan. He says, continue in what you have learned. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep teaching the truths of God's Word. So the people that we are serving continue to grow in their faith. That's what the Apostle Paul told Timothy as well. A young pastor, he said this, continue in what you have learned and become convinced of. Don't stop learning, is what the Apostle Paul said. There's never a time in life where you and I can say, we have it all down. We know enough. There's no need to learn anymore. Let's think for a minute what it is that Lois and Eunice and Paul taught young Timothy. They taught him the two main teachings of the Bible through the Old Testament scriptures. They taught him about God's threats, the law. Threats like this from Ezekiel chapter 18. The soul that sins is the one who will die. Or from Psalm 14, there is no one who is righteous, not even one. Timothy knew his sin. But along with teaching him about sin, they taught him about his Savior as well, the coming Savior, the Savior Jesus. With passages like this from Isaiah, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That idea, continuing to learn, certainly applies to, to us still today. But isn't there a temptation? Isn't there a temptation to fall into what some have termed confirmation syndrome? You get to that point in your life where you've learned everything that is prescribed for you to learn and, and, and now you're set, right? Martin Luther once called that attitude a masterpiece of satanic art. Satan wants nothing more than for you and I to be complacent. For you and I to think, we know everything, we're all set, 
Nothing can harm us anymore. God wants to continue to strengthen us. And he doesn't make a secret as to how. Faith comes from hearing the message the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans. And the same is true for you and me today. Faith comes from hearing the message. That's how God strengthens faith. That's how he keeps you and me close to him, through his word. What an awesome thing to have schools, Sunday schools, faithful teachers and pastors who continue to assist parents as their students continue to grow in that truth. Start early. Continue to learn. Then the Apostle Paul says, all of that effort is worth it. Because phase three of the Apostle Paul's plan to keep doing what you're doing is to live forever. That's God's promise to you. Just as it was Paul's promise through God to Timothy. How from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation. That's what Paul wanted Timothy to know. He wanted him to know that his eternal future was secure. Not because of something Timothy had done or could do, but because of what Jesus had already done in his place. This wisdom that Paul speaks about is not a worldly wisdom. It's not an earthly intelligence. It's knowing Jesus as Savior that makes someone truly wise. Because that's what makes you an heir of eternal life in heaven. Faith in the Savior. That's what God, God's Word gives. Salvation. What an awesome thing for us as God's people to have that promise that our place in heaven is secure because Jesus already won it. That's why God sent His Son. To live the life that you and I could not live. To suffer and die on the cross to pay the penalty that we deserve because of our sins. To rise again. To guarantee that our sins are gone forever. And our place with Him in heaven is secure. You know, I know where I'm going. You know where you're going. You're going to live with your Lord in the perfection of heaven. The Apostle Paul wrote this to the Philippians, Our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, our Lord Jesus Christ. That's God's promise to you. Why do we want that? Why is that the focus of everything that we do? Faith in Jesus, which leads to eternal salvation? Well, just remember the Apostle John's description in Revelation 21. Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. And they will be his people and he will be their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things will have passed away. That's what you have to look forward to. That's what I have to look forward to through our Savior Jesus. You might remember that Jesus once said in his ministry, if anyone will not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he will never enter it. Jesus makes it pretty clear, doesn't he, that it's important to start education early, to teach our children from an early age. But that's not enough. That's not the stopping point. We also want to continue to learn because what we know from the scriptures has eternal impact. And then... We can rest assured that in the grace of God given in Jesus, we will live forever. Keep doing what you're doing. Our Savior Jesus has made it worth the effort. Amen. Please rise. Now invite the congregation to join and we praise you, O God, on pages 48 and 49 in the front part of the hymnal. of 
apostles praise you. A noble fellowship of prophets praise you. A white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your glorious, true, and only Son, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and kind. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the to set us free. You humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God Please be seated. Let us continue on the top of page 50 in the front of the hymnal. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Let us offer up our prayers today for Hazel Meyer in her illness and also for Alice Piskey, who is hospitalized at Gunderson in La Crosse. 
Compassionate Father, in your mercy you transform even sickness and disease into a blessing for your children. With this confidence we commit all those who are sick or suffering to your tender care. Provide healing and relief according to your infinite wisdom and boundless mercy. Grant patient endurance if their sufferings must linger. Help them find true spiritual strength through Jesus and his cross during their time of physical weakness. By the work of the Holy Spirit, teach them to trust in your forgiveness, grace, and love. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, let us offer up a prayer of thanks on the occasion of the 30th wedding anniversary of Brad and Sue Gomick. Lord Jesus, your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for the grace by which you have sustained your servants throughout 30 years of their married life. We ask that you continue to fill their hearts with the unselfish love that reflects your sacrificial love for them, so that their love for each other may never grow weary. With every joy and sorrow that they share, bring them closer to each other and to you, their God and Lord. Encourage all husbands and wives as they seek to fulfill their marriage promises and bless all our homes with your abiding peace. Amen. And we also pray, O Holy Spirit, cause the gospel of salvation to revive and refresh all nations as showers water the earth. Send messengers of your grace throughout the world that the light of your glory may rise on those who are covered in darkness. Let your good news be proclaimed to every nation, tribe, people, and language, that they may be gathered into your kingdom and confess Jesus Christ as Lord, he who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us continue on the bottom of page 50 in the front of the hymnal. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power. Grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
today. You are all invited downstairs for the fellowship time between services at 9.15. Pastor Billets will give a presentation on Luther High School here on the main floor. Please greet each other. Thank you. 